Hey, this is Andy with Rocket City Pinball. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to install my John Wick Coin Stack Upgrade mod. Let's take a look at the game here and explain why we're doing this. So, right up here, we have this little coin stack that Stern has installed here. Now, I like that they've tried to get creative with a flasher, but the execution is still not there for me. So, the reasons why are, first of all, of course, you have a sticker on, on top instead of, you know, an actual coin. It's mounted on a silver piece, which doesn't really match the whole idea of the gold coins. And below it, you have um, several of the coins stacked here. They are intended to look like they're kind of loosely stacked on each other, but it's very clear. Well, first of all, you can't even really tell from the front. But if you were to look from the side where the stacks are slightly misaligned like that, you can still see that they're in a straight line. Every other one is the same position, so it's really not as random as it is intended to look. And last and most egregious to me is the way that this is installed. This silver plate has two studs coming down from it that go through these uh, yellow clear washers that make up the coins, and you can very clearly see this empty shaft inside where the stud passes through and so it's very visible when it lights up, as you can see here. So, for all of these reasons, I decided I wanted to improve on this. So, this is what I have made over here. Um, so, this is my version of the coin stack. So, as you can see, I've made it so that the coins are much more randomly stacked, so it looks more realistic. Uh, you can see the nice detail on there. I have um, fine printed ridges on the edges of the coins. And when you go to install it, there are actual real replica coins from the coins they used in the movie. Um, this is the side that the artwork in the game shows. I prefer this side with the lion. I think the artwork is better and the it's more reflective on this side. The side with the woman with the shield here has those ridges behind her. So it's not quite as reflective, so I like this side better. But the beauty of this mod is that you can install either side facing up. So whichever one you prefer. The kit for this installation will include the coin stack, include the coin, it'll include two screws, and it will also include a hex spacer with a little rubber on it. I'm going to explain later what that's for. Now there's also an additional piece that you can add on to this if you want to enhance it even further. And I have this fancy mount right here, and this will add an additional coin standing on top of the pile as if it's leaning back. So you can um, actually add this option on to have a second coin on the top of the pile. So that's really cool. So I'll show you how to install all this right here. Now the tools you're going to need for this are a Phillips head screwdriver. You're going to need a quarter inch wrench. I like this little socketing wrench. If you have a, a box end or an open end wrench that's quarter inch that will work too. I have an 11 30 seconds nut driver and a 5 16 nut driver and also my magnetic dish that I like to use for all the loose hardware because in order to do this installation it's a little bit tricky because we need to get underneath this coin stack here and remove those two nuts underneath. Now if you were kind of brave one method you could do is you could drop these two targets from below the play field and try to access the nuts from below. That involves having to lift up the play field up and down a few times and it's you know a lot of people don't like messing with switches and the electronic components if they don't have to. So I could show you another method which may take a few more steps but it's it's easier and simpler to do and involves only removing uh, mostly cosmetic hardware. So to do this process, what we have to do is we're actually going to have to remove this ramp, but it's not that hard to do. So first thing I suggest you do, as with all work on machines, is cut the power. Now, to remove this ramp, there are three locations where this mounts. The first two are behind, one of them is behind the vertical up kicker. There's a clear plastic right here with two screws in it. We're going to have to remove those two screws, take that plastic off, and then here's the first nut, which will be removed to remove the ramp. That will be an 11 30 seconds nut. The second one is actually underneath this hex spacer here. There's a hex spacer and then a black spacer, and then that's the other foot of the vertical up kicker section. And then the last one is down here by the slingshots hiding underneath this plastic over here. Now this is my daisy mod. Um, if you have the daisy mod you'll have to pull it off to do this work. If you don't have the daisy mod or you just haven't installed it yet you can just remove the middle screw here and rotate this plastic out of the way so that you can get to that last nut underneath there. So let's start up at this section here. We're going to start by removing this plastic 
where there's a screw and a lock washer and a washer right here. A screw and a lock washer and a washer right here. And for some reason, my game also came with an additional washer underneath this screw as well. So be mindful of that when you take this off. So take off this screw, take off this screw, and remove this plastic. Now with that plastic removed from here and here, in this area, now I can access this nut right here. This is an 11 30 seconds nut, and it will have one washer that's also sitting on top of the foot of the hammer trail. So we're going to take these off right here. All right, with that nut removed, you can see now the foot of the habit trail is exposed there, so that's ready to come off in that section. So next we're going to move down here to where this hex spacer is. This is where you're going to need your quarter inch wrench. Depending how tight this is on there, you might be able to unthread it by hand, but if not, just get your wrench on there and loosen that. Now when you take this hex spacer off, you will also notice underneath you have a black spacer there sitting on top of this foot. So you will have to remove that as well. You might have to get a pair of tweezers or if you have small fingers, you can get in, get in there and pull that off. So remove that as well. Okay, now that I've removed that spacer, I realized that um, I've already taken this area apart and put it back together so I could make this video for you. And I realized that there's a washer underneath there. That washer was supposed to go on top of that foot. So you'll have the hex spacer, the black spacer, and then the washer on top of this foot. So when we reassemble, we'll make sure we take that washer out and put it back on top. Okay, so the third location you have to get to is down here by the shooter lane. Again, with the, you know, the daisy mod here. If you have the daisy mod, just remove this screw here to get her out of the way and then remove that screw underneath her and then take the plastic off. If you don't have the daisy mod, just remove the second screw and rotate the plastic about 45 degrees to the right. All right, now with that plastic out of the way, now I can access the last nut here. So remove this nut and the washer that are on top of the foot of the habit trail. Now, when you remove that nut and washer, you may feel a little tension relief in the ramp as it shifts back to a, a natural, less stressed position. But now the whole ramp is free. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift it straight up so that we can clear off of these little foot, uh, these little footholds here. And as you do that, I want you to just be pay careful attention to this location because you have these wires from these little spotlights that are in the way. So as you lift it straight up, make sure your foot goes past those wires. Okay, and then once you're clear off of those pedestals, now you can remove the ramp by simply pulling it in the direction of where the player stands and it's gonna come right out of these top two holes, just like that. Now it's loose, so now you can take the ramp and just set it aside for now, because it's just gonna get in the way while we do this work. So we're just gonna put it over there for now. Okay, next step in the process is we have to detach the coin plastic. This whole plastic has to come off. So in order to do that, luckily it's only held on in a couple of places. One of them is right here. We've already taken that one off. So the next thing we gotta do is we have to remove these two screws right here and also this metal plate that's underneath. So remove these two screws and pull this plate out. All right, next, so you see we've removed the metal plate, removed those two screws, and so now you'll notice that this whole plastic assembly is loose. Again, it has to come up and off this stud right here to come off. So lift it gently. You will still have these wires from these spotlights going through and going underneath your play field. But lift it up until it clears that pedestal, and then you can rotate it like this so that now we can get to these two nuts on the bottom here. Now, if you don't have a lot of slack here, there are connectors that these wires go to underneath the play field. You could disconnect them if you need to, but you should have enough slack in order to just rotate it about this far, and that will allow you to get your um, 5 16 nut driver and remove these two nuts. So on the bottom of the coin stack, we're now gonna use the 5 16 nut driver, remove this nut and this nut right here. Okay, once you've re removed those two nuts, you'll find that you should be able to pull the whole coin stack off. Now note there's a silver disc on the bottom that's gonna stay in place. The spotlight is uh, protruding through that disc. So you can grab the whole coin stack like this and you should be able to lift it straight off now that you don't have the nuts holding it towards the bottom. So here you go. So there's your spotlight right there and here's your coin stack. So now that we have it off, you can kind of see how it's designed. So you can see the 
have these little clear amber washers on the bottom and the uh, holes for the studs are drilled slightly offset so they can just rotate it 180 degrees and then put them both on there and it makes a slightly offset stack. So it was a good try, but we're going to make it better. Okay, so next you are going to get your coin stack. And with your coin stack, you'll notice on the inside there's a couple of holes at different heights. So I've included two gold screws for you. Obviously the tall gold screw is going to go through the tall hole and the smaller gold screw is going to go through the smaller hole which is easier to put in with two hands there we go got it okay so now you're going to put those in there like that and you're going to come back over to your game now the taller section the section with the tall screw is going to go towards the back of the game because that will have the correct offset to line up with the spotlight Sorry, this is hard to do with one hand, so I'm going to pause it. But essentially, you're going to make sure that the holes in the bottom silver ring are lined up with the holes in the plastic. Make sure your screws are lined up with those, and you're going to insert it through those holes. Now, once you have those screws inserted through the holes, you should find that the silver disc on the bottom fits on the inside of the coin stack, and the whole coin stack should sit flush against the plastic because there's a slight gap on the bottom to allow for that silver disc to stay inside underneath it. Okay, now you're going to get those two nuts that we removed and you're going to get your nut driver and you're going to put those two nuts right back on the two screws that should be protruding out the bottom of your coin stack. Okay, just to show you what that looks like with the nuts engaged there. So there's my two screws. They pass through the bottom and now I've got the two nuts attached in both locations. So just keep in mind this time you're going to need to um, thread the nuts on from the bottom with your nut driver, but you will have to brace them on the top with a, your Phillips head screwdriver to keep the screws from spinning. You don't have that problem on the original coin stack because they're threaded studs attached to that top disc. So get your screwdriver, get your nut driver, and let's tighten that down. So here we go. Coin stack is now fully torqued down and you can see that I got it dirty because my hands were dirty so I'm gonna wipe that off uh, but anyway so underneath here there's my two nuts that are tightened down now you might be wondering but well, why the different height screws here well remember one of my complaints about the original design was you were able to see a shaft when this was lit lit up uh, from the threaded stud passing through there so with a short screw on this side there's no shaft there so you'll get nice clean light coming through the front Okay, next step is to get this plastic back in place. Don't get overzealous and put the coin on yet. We're not, we don't need to do that yet. So you've got this hole right here behind the spotlights. That hole goes on top of this stud right here. Again, watch your wires. And that should allow the plastic to sit back in place. So our next step is to come back to the front. That metal plate, the triangular piece, should protrude on this side and you're gonna slide it underneath this plastic and put these two screws back in. Okay, a couple quick things to note here. Again, this is how your metal piece, <coughs> excuse me, and your screws should be oriented. Um, each of these screws, by the way, was a screw, a lock washer, and a washer. So just make sure you don't lose any hardware. One other point I should mention is the back side of this plastic, Kind of hard to see in the position we're in right now, but this plastic has, here it is right here, has a, a slot in the plastic, and that's to allow these wires to have a place to go. So as you're setting this plastic back in place, make sure you get the wires to go into that slot so they're sitting right there. Okay, next step is we got to bring our habit trail back in. Let me grab it. Okay, we've got the nice habit trail here, so remember to install this. We're going to start in the back, and you're going to make sure that the top two rails Make sure you have it oriented the right way, of course, so your vertical up kicker is going to end up there. <clears throat> so your top two rails are going to go into those two holes, and that's the only place it actually attaches up here. So go ahead and feed those in there. And that gets you approximately in the right position where you need to be. Now, your next step is you will have to put a little bit of force just to get this in the right position. But you're going to get your feet of the habit trail down over those two studs right there. As you bring this forward location down, again, be careful of those wires. You don't want to get them pinched underneath the foot. So we're going to inspect it here. Yep, okay, we got cleared past all the wires there. So that's good. And then the last location to set it down on is this one down here by the shooter lane. And you can see it's already in place. Now we're going to put this nut on first. 
you may have to put a little uh, downforce and a little pull on it to get it positioned just where you need it because you're going to want this opening positioned centered above your inlane right here. So get your um, washer and nut that goes in this location here, the 11 32nd size, and get those installed. Okay, so I have this washer and nut installed here, and you can see I've got the opening positioned right above the habit trail. Be careful, or excuse me, right above the inlane. Be careful not to move it too far to the left because then you'll be um, right over the edge of that plastic and the ball will hit the plastic as it comes in. Okay, next we're going to move up back up here where these two threaded studs are. We're going to save this one till last, so let's put this one on next. So again, you should have a washer and a uh, 11 30 seconds nut that goes right here. Okay, so now I have that one installed. So the last location is this pedestal here. So I'm going to have a washer, the black spacer, and then the quarter inch hex spacer on top of that. So the hardest part here really is just getting the washer in there. You got to kind of um, you may have to pull the wires back a little bit to feed the washer in there, but washer, black spacer, hex spacer. And there we go. Washer, black spacer, hex spacer. Okay, we're in the home stretch now. So next is the plastic that mounts at these two locations up here. It's that clear plastic. This side had a washer, a lock washer, and a screw. This side had a washer underneath the plastic, and then a washer, lock washer, and screw on the top. So be mindful of that extra washer if your game has that too. Okay, there we go. So this plastic now reinstalled. Now there's one more plastic to do and that one is down here and then we're gonna get to the fun stuff. Okay, so here if you fully remove the plastic then the plastic goes on here with two screws. If you removed just this middle one and rotated it outward toward the shooter lane then rotate it back, put the middle screw back in. Or if you have the daisy mod Put the plastic on, put the middle screw in, and then put the daisy mod back with this front screw. And just a quick reminder, if you do have the daisy mod, make sure her feet, her feet should be behind the point of that plastic there before you set her down, because the mount is at a slight angle to accommodate that to make sure that she's looking up closer towards the player. All right, there we go, daisy back installed, and again, back feet down below the plastic, so she's angled up a little bit. Okay, so now for the fun part. So now you have to decide. This is where you choose your own adventure. So you're going to decide if you want the lion side of the coin facing up, or if you want the woman with the shield side facing up. So again, as I mentioned earlier, this side is what's in the artwork, but again, the other side of the coin has that cool lion. I like that better, so I'm gonna use that side. So what you should be able to do now is you should be able to come right in and orient the coin in the direction of your choosing, and you should be able to just drop it right in and it should press fit nice and snug right into that stack, just like that. Okay, so there we are. Let's turn the lights back on. You can get a look at that. There we go, lights up nice and pretty. Now for those who ordered just the coin stack by itself, there's one other last step. You'll notice your kit had one more piece, it was this. Now what this is for, this hex spacer in the back kind of bugged me, because I'm sitting here looking at this and I can see the yellow coins, the gold coin, uh, the black of the uh, little spotlights back here, and then this big silver hex spacer sticking up. And I. It, I don't know, I just found it to be kind of ugly, kind of distracting. So what I've provided is a black hex sleeve. It's basically a cover for that hex spacer. And all you have to do is slide it right over the top. Now you'll notice there's also a black rubber I provided. The black rubber is just a little extra air ball protection for your coin stack, so it's gonna provide a little cushion from the back side. So you just kind of push it down in there. But now you'll notice with the black one in there, look, the hex spacer disappeared. Much cleaner look now. So, if you ordered the coin stack by itself, then you also get the hex spacer included with it so that you can clean that up just like that. Now, if you ordered the additional coin <clears throat> piece on the top, because my other thing looking at this still, I said, okay, that's an improvement, but one thing I like better was what if I just couldn't see that at all? So then I decided to try to make another piece that could mount on that hex spacer and cover the whole area. Look at that, now you can't see it at all. So I made this mount to mount one more coin. As you can see, it's printed fairly thick and robust. That's 100% infill, so it's nice and strong to protect against air balls. So what you're gonna do if you ordered this piece as well, is you're gonna take your second coin that came with it, 
Again, decide which side of the coin you want to use. Once again, I like the lion side, so I'm going to use that. If you change your mind later and you want to push the coin back out, that's why I've designed it with this hole here. You can take a pencil or a screwdriver, you know, I mean, in the spirit of John Wick, it should be a pencil, and push it out from the back side and put it in there. So, um, once again, it's a press fit, which is easier to do with two hands. So I'm going to go and press fit my coin into that opening. Okay, so my coin is pressed in. Now you will notice that I used a different color filament to print this piece versus the uh, translucent piece that's in here. Because the translucent one needs to light up. It needs to be kind of yellowish. This one is not quite as uh, translucent. And so I chose it because it has this nice gold sparkle to it and you know blends in with the edge a little bit better than the yellow does. But the yellow needs to be that way so it can light up. So what you're gonna bring in here, once again, you've got a black rubber included to help provide some support for the back of the coin stack, but you simply just slide it right on to that hex spacer there. Push that black rubber down to make sure it's behind the coin stack for that extra cushion. And then I've also provided a small gold screw and a lock washer, which goes in the top of the hex spacer right there. Okay, now that screw and lock washer are installed. So that secures the leaning coin section in place. And now we can step back and admire our handiwork. So look, now you can't see the spotlights pretty much at all. So not only that, so you hit all the unsightly hardware, which were the two, spots light and two spotlights and the wires and the hex spacer. Uh, and now you also have that extra coin standing up, which kind of helps balance out the toys on the play field. One final comment to add, uh, there was some concern voiced about uh, air balls. How, this, how is this going to stand up to air balls? As I mentioned earlier, I printed the leaning coin at 100% infill with this overbuilt support in the back here. So this piece is very, very strong. The coin stack as well is also strong and we've added that um, black rubber behind it for a little extra cushion anyway. Uh, I've been play testing this product for uh, at least four or five days now with dozens and dozens of games. I've smacked this full on in the face with several air balls and it just stood there shining right back at me. So uh, so you should be fine with the air ball situation because this game is prone to them. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is Rocket City pinball parts are warranted 100%. So if you do get some ridiculous air ball that does happen to damage the coin stack or the leaning coin support, I will replace it for you free of charge. This is the John Wick coin stack upgrade mod from Rocket City Pinball. Reach out if you have any questions rocketcitypinball.com